Welcome to IBM's Digital Business Automation Platform. The only platform to offer a tightly integrated set of capabilities to build and deploy robust digital business solutions that disrupt the competition, increase customer engagement, and optimize workplace productivity. One of the hallmarks of the digital business automation platform is a single user interface and solution framework that connects people, processes, and content in a single environment. With the explosion of cloud, hybrid, and mobile deployments, Content Navigator offers heightened value as the single location to search and view content and data in any format. Now, let's hear from ECM's technical evangelist, Robert Nonenkamp, who will show off some of the features of Content Navigator. Bob? Thank you very much, David. I've got my ECM hard hat on. So Content Navigator is there's much more than a user interface. It provides corporations with a single point of access for all our content throughout the enterprise. It's a simple and configurable HTML5 browser-based solution for all of our IBM ECM repositories, Box and CMIS, and it allows Navigator users to easily search through all their repositories to find the required content. ICN, as we sometimes call for short, IBM Content Navigator, also supports external data integration for improved metadata and indexing. And I'll show you some of that during the demo today. So as our framework for corporate content navigation, it also offers a visual component toolkit to quickly build and integrate custom applications. And that includes SDKs for mobile solutions. So you can use uh, Content Navigator mobile apps that are stock on the app stores for iOS and Android, or you can build your own. And our plugin architecture separates customization from the base navigator code, which makes upgrades a breeze, even though you may have customizations to satisfy specific business requirements to navigate it. And users can access and edit their content on the go with mobile devices, which we'll show you today. And you can also access and edit content directly with Microsoft Office applications, and whether that's you know, on premises, on your laptop with your uh, Office or Word installed on your laptop, or using the Office Online services. And you'll get a flavor of that today during the demo. All right, so uh, let me give you a little bit of a warm-up of what Content Navigator is before I jump into all the details. So Content Navigator works on the premise of a desktop. So uh, a line of business, uh, you know, IT person, could build different desktops to satisfy different applications for uh, an enterprise. So we could have a desktop for our HR folks to handle employee onboarding. We could have another desktop to handle uh, financial work, things like that. So basically, a desktop is a single look and feel experience for one or more users. And a desktop determines what features or views a particular user role, or role has access to. And it's, so I thought it would be a little bit useful here to go over what the parts of the desktop here are basic. Um, so the bar across the top is a main banner, and that can be customized as well as the name in the upper left. So easily customizable with just a few clicks by an admin or power user. And you'll see that a lot of the customizations of this interface can be done without any programming whatsoever. Um, next, you'll see the logged in username in the upper right, as well as the hamburger, that three horizontal line icon for accessing settings and advanced functions and help. And on the far left is the feature view pane, which shows the currently available features for this desktop. And those icons, that house icon on the left, there's a file folder, an inbox there for browsing, searching, team spaces work, entry templates, and we could have additional plugins that embed features right into there. Now the center view pane shows the, basically shows what content is that we're looking at at the given time based on what features we're looking at. In this case here, in our browse view, on the left side we have a navigation pane, in the center we have a content pane, and our right has details with thumbnails. And as we change around the layout, so for example, we were looking at a details view right now, but if we change over to the magazine view, we can see a different view with miniature thumbnails, and this is really handy for taking advantage of the social features. So I can take a look at the comments, the tags, likes. 
So I could easily add uh, my own comments here to documents. Say, hey, let's have our next meeting here. There we go. Uh, and these comments we share and helps with social collaboration on your content here right in the Navigator interface. We also have a, fil a uh, film strip view that's very handy for looking at media in bulk. All right, so that's just a quick high level what the Navigator interface looks like, and that'll be similar whether you're looking at it from a web browser interface or mobile or through our integration with Microsoft Office, all of which I'll show you today during our demonstration. All right, so let's jump into our first set of features. Our first set of features today I'll show you is role-based redaction. So role-based redaction allows uh, a, a power user to set up redactions on content. And the use case here might be the fact that you need to go through and prevent users, some set of users, from seeing, let's say, social security numbers, HIPAA information, personal information, confidential business information. And setting up redactions is great, but it's not really powerful for an enterprise unless you can assign reasons and permissions to this. So you can ensure the right people are allowed to see the content and the people who are not allowed to see the content are not allowed to see that bits of content. So I'm going to show you how role-based redaction works here. And David, just one more check. Are you seeing the uh, screen again of a web browser? Well, I'm looking Maybe at he's the, on mute. see you in. No, I'm here. Can you hear me? Um, okay. Yeah, I yeah, great, the, great. The, I see the thumbnail view still. Okay, great, great, great. Did you see a PowerPoint there just a second ago when I jumped over there? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So let's, uh, let's show you. So in this use case, I'm going to show here, an HR staffer will redact some Social Security numbers and some employee documentation. So um, I'm going to go into our team space as an HR employee. Now, a team space is a self-provisionable user space where – uh, let's say the HR team could collaborate together and work on sets of documents. So they could examine the documents related to new employee onboarding, for example. And in this case, an HR employee looks at this and realizes that the W-4 has some information in here that should not necessarily be shown to the public at large in the company. So this W-4 has, so for example, uh, a social security number on it. Now, what you're seeing this PDF displayed in is our Navigator's Deja Virtual Viewer. And this is an HTML5 viewer. And of course, it doesn't require any applets, so nobody's downloading Java or anything. It's all happening live in HTML5 in the browser. And all this functionality is part of our Deja Virtual Viewer. And one of the pieces of functionality here that I'm going to show is the redaction capabilities. So the, here's our social security number. And what I can do is go ahead and, as an HR employee, put a redaction element on that. Now, some people in my corporation, I want to be able to see it, be able to see behind that Social Security number, and others, I don't. So I'm going to identify a reason code here and identify this as a Social Security number. And so now this redaction has a reason code tied to it, and behind the scenes, a power user has set up groups and permissions based on that reason. So now, me as a power user, I'm able to see behind that social security number redaction, but other users will not be able to see behind that. And this works, this is embedded in the Navigator framework, this permission to block this uh, redaction. So no matter whether you're looking at it from a thumbnail point of view, a mobile client, or coming in through any of our integrations, let's say with Navigator for our Microsoft Office, all of the client activities accessing the content through Navigator will have that redaction functionality and security enforced on that content. So users who have permission to see behind the redaction will be able to see behind the redaction, and users who don't won't. So that's role-based redaction. Uh, another thing I'd love to show you in context of the uh, Deja Virtual Viewer is another one of our new functionalities called Merge and Split. So this is the ability 
to manipulate content, not only at the page level, but also between documents. And of course, this works in our Deja Virtual Viewer here, so there's no applets or anything to download. So we can merge, split, cut, copy, paste, reorder, and rotate documents right in the viewer. And I'm going to show you how that works right now. So in this use case, our HR team is going to use merge and split to consolidate some of the documentation we've collected about an employee into a single document so it's easier to pass around the company. So I'm going to use our browse view as an HR employee, go into my departments, into my HR, into my Jones folder here. There we go, in our details view. And I can select both these documents. As the HR person, I want to consolidate these documents and take a look at them. So I'm going to use our merge and split functionality, which of course launches our virtual viewer. And I see two tabs. So I have both documents loaded into the virtual viewer, but I want to see them side by side. So I'm going to pop this and move this to another tab. And so now I've got both sets of documentation here from this new employee, a license and a resume, both here side by side. And I realized first that this is not facing the right way. So let's rotate this license so it's facing the right direction. And now I can also go through and copy this into this document here. So I can copy the license into this resume document and then save it. Check it back into the ECM environment. And I'll also go through and save this license now that it's directed the right way. And now I can close. And when I go through and open this resume again, you can see that the thumbnail has already automatically been updated. So this resume document now has the three pages. So of course, all you can imagine a variety of different merge and split use cases to solve, uh, you know, removing pages that were incorrectly faxed in or faxed in upside down, uh, pages that were faxed in in the wrong order, or consolidating documents, or even deleting pages from a document can all be done with our merge and split functionality right here in the browser, saving time, not having to have an end user download a document, edit it, copy and paste it with manual utilities. You can do it right here in the web browser. So that's merge and split. The next thing I wanted to show you was our content navigator edit service. And again, this saves time by allowing people to launch the edit directly from the web browser. So if I want to edit a Word document, for example, and it's in my navigator environment in the web browser, I can simply right click and say edit it right now and no downloading it to the desktop, launching it in Word, and then saving it back in the desktop and uploading that back into the document into the web browser. All that stuff is skipped with our fantastic new edit service. So let me show you how that works. So in this use case, an HR staffer can create a new employee letter uh, based on templates. So uh, I'm going to go into my, uh, let's see, where am I going to go here? My favorites. And here's my employee letter template. Now I can go ahead and create a new document based on this document as a template. So this is an offer letter, and we create offer letters all the time here in our HR department, and so this is our standard offer letter. And I can use that to create a basically the template for our new offer letter. And so here I'm going to put a title in, and this course will be actually where, where am I going to save it in my ECM environment, first of all. So I'll put it in my HR folder for our employee. And it automatically picked up the fact that employee documentation goes in that folder, thanks to the advantages of entry templates. And of course, it designed the metadata view for exactly what I needed to enter, the name, John Jones, and the department dropdown. And all this can, takes advantage of dropdowns, entry templates, as well as EDS, so I can customize my entry template and my data entry, metadata entry, to make this happen as quickly as possible.
now that I've selected where and what metadata, the edit service really kicks in and automatically launches Word with that template base. And so now I can go ahead and enter the information. I won't enter a lot of information here because I want to move fast. Dun, 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 and click Save and Close. And the document is automatically added into the repository in that location. So now if I browse to that employee folder, there is my new document that was based on that template. And that edit service works great for editing, basically building new documents off the template, as well as editing documents that are already in the ECM environment. So I can right click and edit using my desktop apps, and again, I, as an HR employee, don't have to download that to my desktop to edit it, and then save it, and then re-upload it. Editing with desktop apps makes that look seamless. So that's another great feature that got introduced recently with Content Navigator. Another feature I want to show you today is Office Online Server integration with Content Navigator. So it basically, this takes it one step further from what we did just a minute ago. Office Online Server, uh, if you're not familiar with it, is uh, I, I, basically the latest version of Microsoft Office Web Application Support. And it's not Office 365 in the cloud. This is an online server that's generally installed on-premises at a customer environment and allows editing in a web browser. So this takes that last step of the edit service one step further and allows us to do web-based editing of documents. So we don't need to have Word or Excel or PowerPoint installed on our desktop when we're leveraging Office Online Server. And not only that, it also allows co-editing, collaborative editing. So me and my fellow HR teammates can all work on the same document at the same time. So let me show you how this works. So in this use case, we'll edit an employee offer letter in a web browser. So I have a separate desktop experience here that was just configured for Office Online Editing. This gives you a feel to the fact that I can use different desktop experiences in Navigator to allow different features to be published out to a set of users. So I'm going to pop into my favorites here. And here is a uh, John Eastman employee letter. And let's say I need to edit this as an HR employee before it goes out and gets sent. So one of my options here is to edit this document with the Office Online Services. This is communicating with the Office Online Server based on our pre company premises at Focus Corporation. And is copying a temporary the Office Online Server where now I can go through and edit this document. So I can easily go through John Eason, let's say uh, it was typoed, and we can go ahead and make that change. And simply closing it, that means the document is saved in the Office Online server, and when everybody's done editing that document, it is saved back into the ECM environment as a new version. And of course, during that web browser environment, we could co-edit, and other people could have I could have seen other people's cursors, you know, dance around while they were making their own edits. So if I go here and refresh the screen, we can see here that uh, in the properties, we can see here that a new version was created just a minute ago with our edits with Office Online Server. Next, I want to show you how our integration works with Microsoft Office. So we have a direct integration with Microsoft Office. So for example, uh, if you, any document here um, can be opened and saved directly in the Content Navigator environment. So the integration here with Microsoft Office happens at, is basically a ribbon plugin. And of course, if we had SSO enabled, then we, well, I wouldn't have had to log in, it would have automatically logged in, but here, this course is a desktop integration with Navigator. So a, the same desktops we see in the browser environment, we can see right here in Microsoft Office without having to need any of this browser backend stuff. So I can access my ECM content directly from Office, whether it's Word, PowerPoint, Excel, et cetera. 
And it's worked for, of course, browsing through the content, as well as it understands team spaces. So every aspect of that Navigator desktop experience is available here in the Microsoft environment. So I can go through and work with content directly here in these folder structures that are part of this Navigator integration ribbon. So I can go through as an HR employee and open up various documents, edit them, and save them directly back into the Navigator environment directly from Office. Now I had one more feature I wanted to show you today, and that is our mobile environment. So I'm going to do that here, and I'm going to launch my mobile application. So IBM Content Navigator environment also has some stock mobile apps that are available on the iOS and the uh, Android stores. And again, this works on a desktop environment. So the same features that you see, whether in the web browser or in the office environment, are available also on your mobile device, with some extra sprinkles added in, like on-device access. So what we'll just show you first here, of course, you can browse and see the same folder structures that were available in the web environment. They're available here on the mobile environment as well. And these are native applications. So they're highly responsive with very easy functionality, single click slides. And so our UI designers uh, made this very easy for people to use. Uh, none of this slower hybrid application stuff going on here. This is very fast and intuitive features. Um, so, and all the features are available here, property editing, adding as a favorite, uh, allowing a document to be synced for online device action. So things will be available when the mobile device is offline, like you're on an airplane or you're under a bridge or you're uh, out in Oregon watching the eclipse, not near any Wi-Fi. Um, and of course, uh, when you're accessing stuff that are available um, off when you're offline, that's where the on-device functionality is available. So the documents that are synced locally on the device are listed here in your on-device cache. And of course, this is highly secure. So these are encrypted at, these are encrypted files. So people who can't access this application won't be able to access these on-device, uh, this on-device cache. But all the functionality is available from a navigator environment, browsing, team spaces, everything you saw in the web browser environment is pretty much available here on mobile as well. So thanks to Bob Nonenkamp, and thank you to you for spending a few minutes with us to learn about the digital business automation platform from IBM and Content Navigator, the single user interface and solution framework.